Hi, I'm Christopher. I'm a senior enterprise advocate at GitHub, and I want to talk today about GitHub Copilot and how it helps me as a developer. You see, I became a developer because the job seemed like it was an awful lot of fun. And oftentimes it is. But there's also an awful lot of tedium. What I want to be able to do is solve the big problems and come up with unique solutions. But what I really find myself doing a lot is writing boilerplate code, dealing with obscure syntax, and having to learn an awful lot of new languages and frameworks. Copilot can eliminate the repetition. It can help keep me in the flow by reducing the number of times that I have to leave my IDE to go look something up. So how does it do this magic? Well, let's take a look. I have here a Python Django application. And Python Django is a great web framework that's built for creating front ends to back end databases. The first thing that I need is a model, and this can be repetitive code. So using natural language, I can describe what I want. I can say create a model called speaker with name, email, and LinkedIn URL. And now we get some gray italicized text that is my code suggestion from Copilot. It's suggesting this class speaker. I hit tab to accept it. And then I notice an entire class suggestion from Copilot all based on that one sentence comment. I hit tab to accept, and now that's been built for me. Now, how does GitHub Copilot make its magic happen? Well, it's based on a training model that consists of billions of lines of publicly available code and text. That allows it to synthesize that natural language comment into a code suggestion. It's also able to make suggestions that follow best practices. It's a very common best practice in Django, for example, to override the string function, so that way we can get a string representation of an instance of an object. And sure enough, in that suggestion that Copilot made, it went ahead and included that. We also notice that Copilot is able to read my code and make suggestions based on that. So it gives me a suggestion down below of a brand new comment to create a talk model because it saw that I had a speaker. It goes, hey, wait a minute. You've got this speaker. They probably need to do something. Here's a talk for you. And I can loop through a couple of different suggestions that it might be making based on what it sees, and then hit tab to accept. So I'm going to accept that comment. I hit return. I hit tab to accept the next part, and then hit tab to accept the entire class that it's now generated for me. One of the other big places where Copilot shines in keeping me in the zone is helping to reduce the number of times that I have to go look up some bit of syntax. I, generally speaking, can get around regular expressions, but quite frequently, I need to go look up that syntax. But with Copilot, I can just stay in the flow. I can describe one more time in natural language what it is that I want. Let's say I want to add on a code field with a pattern of three uppercase letters, a dash, and three digits. And Copilot actually even suggested the rest of the way because it saw what it was that I was trying to do. And I hit return. And now Copilot will make a suggestion for me of a regular expression. So I didn't have to go look up that syntax. Copilot did that for me right here. GitHub Copilot works across languages and frameworks. We've already seen how it can help us out with a Python Django app. But what about, say, C Sharp and a Web API app? Well, I have a model and validator and data context already set up, and I want to now create a controller. A controller that typically involves an awful lot of tedious boilerplate code. Well, I can just code like I normally would. I'll add in my speaker controller. I will begin to import in the appropriate namespace. So we'll say using, and then Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC, which you'll notice that Copilot is suggesting. It's also suggesting my Entity Framework Core. And now I need to go grab my data model. So I'll say using 
conference.data. And then now, what you're going to notice is that Copilot takes over the rest from here. It sets up my namespace for me. It adds in the appropriate attribute for API controller and sets up the route, and then generates the entire controller for me. I wrote maybe about a line and a quarter worth of code, and it took care of the rest for me. Now, when you see that gray italicized text, you might be thinking, gosh, that looks an awful lot like IntelliSense. And you might then be wondering, well, what's the difference between IntelliSense and Copilot? Well, IntelliSense is wonderful at making small suggestions. It can help remind me what the name of a variable is or help point me at a particular method. But it does require that I get a big part of the way there, that I'm already starting to write my code. But with Copilot, I was able to say in natural language, this is what I want, and get an entire class suggested for me, something which IntelliSense isn't able to do. You also might be wondering, well, what about ChatGPT? And ChatGPT is a fantastic external tool, but it's going to lack context. Copilot knew that I was creating a Django application. And the code suggestion that it made was based on that. That if we notice with our speaker class, it inherits from models.model, which is exactly what we want with a Django class. If I was using ChatGPT, I would have to go to this external tool. I would have to describe the entire scenario, the frameworks that I'm using, eventually get a code suggestion that I would then have to copy and paste over to here. Copilot meets me right where I am and in the tools that I'm already using. If you're using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, JetBrains, or NeoVim, there's a plugin or extension that's available to you for GitHub Copilot. And you might be wondering, does Copilot obviate developers? Is it going to obviate my job? And the answer is no. You still need to have a developer. Copilot does not generate perfect code. You'll notice in my example here that when it created the reference between my talk and my speaker, it said it such that if we delete a speaker that has a talk, it's going to delete all of their talks. And that's probably not what I want. So I can go back and make the update to that code to ensure that that's now going to be protected. So that's going to block a speaker from being deleted if they have a talk. So I can modify all of the code that it generates, and I want to make sure that I still review it. I also want to ensure that it goes through all of the standard checks that I have for code that I wrote or anybody else wrote that's going to be committed into our code base. This includes our security checks, code quality checks, linting, et cetera. Copilot is a copilot, not a pilot. And what Copilot will do is allow me as a developer to focus in on the bigger picture. And so if we bring it back to my code one last time here, and let's say I want to register all of those objects, all of those classes that I made with the admin page, I can come over to my admin pie and notice that Copilot, based on all of its training data, based on its sense of my context, starts suggesting the code that I need. So I didn't even need to add in any comments. I didn't need to write any code. And Copilot made all of those suggestions for me. And we see this reflected in the survey data that we get back from developers that have access to GitHub Copilot for Business. 73% report improved job satisfaction, and 87% report a reduction in repetitive code. GitHub Copilot also just reduces the amount of all up code that I have to write by up to 46% and improves productivity by up to 55%. Of all the things GitHub Copilot for Business can do, what it can't do is replace your role as a software creator. If you want to start playing around with Copilot, you can check out that URL on the screen, 
which will bring you to a curated environment where you can explore the magic of GitHub Copilot for yourself.